Hello everybody and welcome to Chess24 and welcome to my roundup of Game 8 of the World Championship Finals between Magnus Carlsen, the current champ, and Vichy Anand, the challenger. Unfortunately, today we had a bit of a damp squib of a game, a draw. Unfortunately, no fireworks for us neutrals who wanted to see a bit of blood, especially we wanted to see Vichy Anand, who is trailing by one point, to really put the pressure on Magnus with the white pieces, but looked like today Magnus had absolutely no problems at all managed to draw the game with black relatively easily, meaning that he maintains a one-point advantage and has white uh, the day after next, as there is a rest day tomorrow. So let's have a look at the game. And we had, uh, as we would expect, by Bishy d4, knight f6, c4, e6, and we have a queen's gambit declined that we've seen already in this match with bishop f4. Now, we saw this, however, when Magnus played after Castle's e3, we saw the move c6. However, in that game, uh, Vichy showed great opening preparation. Actually, it was the only game that Vichy beat Magnus in. So here, we didn't see c6, but instead we saw the old main line with c5, a favorite of Nigel Shorts, uh, who I've seen play it lots of times over the years. It went out of fashion, really, because White was getting some success in the main line, with, which uh, happens after dc5, bishop c5, a3, knight c6. By the way, this is the game, queen c2. And now what Black was normally playing was the move queen to a5. Uh, but White had been doing well in that. Instead, Magnus introduced a very interesting, not a novelty, but uh, a move that you don't see at top level, at least very much, a move rook e8. And we were very excited about this uh, here in the uh, the commentary booth because we thought, well, you know, potentially there are ways for this to really uh, liven up very quickly. For example, the move Castle's queenside here, and then the move e5 followed by d4 and complications all over the shop, and potentially a lot of a lot of excitement indeed. Instead, um, after rook e8. Vichy played the move, unfortunately it's the best move, but it's also one that can lead to more tranquil waters, and that's the move bishop g5. Uh, just getting out of any e5 ideas, which obviously hits the bishop, pinning this knight, and of course meaning that you pressurize this d5 point even more. And here again, there was a moment where Carlsen could have spiced things up very much with the move d4, but after the following line, bishop takes knight, queen takes bishop knight e4, and then the following rather forced variation, queen takes c5, bishop takes h7, king h8, castles. I'm sure Magnus had analyzed this at home, all pretty much forced. Um, unfortunately, it looks as though white has a rather annoying initiative here. For example, if e takes f2, rook takes f2, you can't trap the bishop with g6 because we can just whip that pawn off and the sacrifice and the resulting attack when you get knight g5 in this king is feeling rather, rather weak here and alone on h8. So that wasn't going to happen. Instead, therefore, instead of d4 on move 10, Carlsen played the move bishop to e7, which also um, is a very sensible move, just uh, unpinning the queen. And after rook d1, putting it in another pin, once more we've seen the queen come out the pin. Now ideas of knight e4 are in the air thanks to this. Uh, knight being pinned, so we saw bishop d3, which is the move we expected, also uh, threatens bishop takes f6, so h6 was played, bishop h4, and now d takes c4. So uh, Carlsen released the tension in center, bishop takes c4 played, and the move a6. So ideally what black wants to do is get in a very quick b5, bishop b7, rook to the center, and complete development. So it was here where I believe White missed um, a good chance to at least pose some questions. And I think here, instead of the move Castles, which is fine, and the move Vichy played, I think I would have preferred the move Bishop A2. Just a move before Castling, because now I threaten Bishop B1 and Bishop takes F6. And we can see here how along the long diagonal I've got all sorts of threats. So for example, if b5, I can play bishop b1, 
And if bishop b7 now, actually that loses on the spot to the move rook to d7, a fantastic idea. The point is that if knight takes d7, I play queen h7 check and mate. So the rook is actually untouchable. And also the point is that let's say rook a b8, now I can take on f6, and after bishop takes f6, the difference is now after check, king f8, queen h8 is mate because I cover this very important square with the rook. So this would have caused black some problems. And I think after bishop b1, actually, black would have had to have already taken some serious uh, measures to stop this very simple idea. Maybe the move g5, maybe the move b4. But either way, these are both very double-edged moves. And, well, if you have to play a move like g5 in this position with black, clearly that's going to be to white's advantage. Um, uh, in the long term, that's a very weakening move for the king g5, and uh, well, it would uh, certainly give uh, Vichy something to grab onto. However, he played castles, which I just think is a bit too wet. I think it's just a bit too. Uh, I don't want to say the word lazy, but it, it it doesn't feel like the critical move to you because now after b5, bishop a2, bishop b7, the difference is black is one move closer to uh, resolving this problem with uh, after bishop b1. Yes, rook d7 is a threat, but now we can just play rook a d8. And the point is that now after bishop takes knight, which is what happens, bishop takes bishop, queen h7 check doesn't actually threaten anything. King f8, and there is no way for white to really increase the pressure. You can try and play something like knight e4, but after rook takes d1, rook takes d1, rook d8, still there's absolutely nothing. The check, king e7, actually might even be a bit problematic for white. So as a result, after bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, Vichy played the move knight e4, attacking the bishop had to come back, and then knight c5 was the logical follow-up. And here, yes, queen h7, uh, queen h8 is a, is a mating threat, so you have to take the knight. Queen takes c5, and it's in this position where white is slightly, slightly better. He's got the better bishop. Uh, all of the pawns on the queen side are on light squares, which is clearly beneficial for white in the long term. But Magnus found a very nice way to neutralize the pressure with the move b4. Uh, offering a queen exchange, the point is that if you take on c a5, takes and take on b4, here you can just play the move knight c4, attacking this b2 pawn and threatening bishop takes knight, pawn takes, followed by knight d2, which is very uncomfortable. So here, black would have absolutely no problems at all. As a result, Vichy just defended his queen with rook c1, but after the following mass exchange and knight e7, we got into a position where, again, white is slightly, slightly better, but it's not enough to trouble somebody of Carlson's strength. Rook c1, rook c8, we saw even more uh, exchanges of the rooks now, bishop d3, rook d8, but after takes, 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 we got into an ending where, again, white must be better, white is the one for preference, but it's just not enough. White would love to be able to land a knight in c5, but Carlsen very adequately defended against that with the move knight d7 on move 30. And despite uh, chasing this bishop from b7, knight a5, bishop c8, again, here, White just hasn't got enough to put enough pressure on black to, so that he uh, has any real, real problems to deal with. The kings came to the centre, uh, and that was really a sign that, uh, you know, Vichy was, uh, was going to be content with the draw. Bishop e2, king c5, f4, knight c6. There was a, an exchange, king d4, king d6, uh, rather f6 e4 and king d6, but with the reduced material and the fact that only one piece can attack the weakness and one piece is defending the weakness, really there's there's no hope of a, uh, of a, of a win at all here. So they shook hands on the 40th move. So all in all, disappointing for us neutrals who wanted to see a bit of blood. I really believe that the big moment was on move 15 with this bishop a2 move. I think that would have really made the game quite interesting and a lot more imbalanced. As it happened, Carlsen defended well, didn't really have any problems. Vichy, again, failing to pressure what uh, Magnus with the white pieces, which is, for me, uh, his big problem in this match. He's not pushing enough with white, has to find some other way to do it, otherwise Magnus, quite simply, is going to sail to another World Championship victory, maintain his title, 
And, uh, well, we'll see what happens. There are still four games to go. Join us again, not tomorrow, but the day after next here on Chess24. Uh, tomorrow is a rest day, so we'll be back on Thursday. We have commentary for you in English, German, Russian and Spanish, so you can choose whichever language you like. In the meantime, remember to check out the rest of Ch Chess24, become a premium member, enjoy the hundreds of hours of videos, tactics trainers, the ebooks, and all the other features we now have on the site. And uh, have a great day tomorrow, and looking forward to seeing you all again on Thursday.